Welcome back to the John Forcade Show. And in this segment, uh, each and every week, we try to spotlight some of the top players in Louisiana Southeast Conference and also players that are playing either against LSU or Tulane. But, uh, man, we got to go to LSU with this one, a guy that has really broke out. And I think he's the next A.J. Green uh, type wide receiver in college football, and that's Malachi Dupree. So I'm for so many years at John Curtis, a big six foot three, 195 pounds sophomore, 21 catches this season, 397 yards, 18.9 yards a catch. He is averaging over 21 over the last three games, five touchdowns. And John, he was a guy that I think early on Brandon Harris kind of bird dog. I think that was good rapport between him and Harris. Uh, catching the football downfield, but here you got a big six foot three receiver, over 40 inch vertical, got good hands. Uh, he's learning how to go over the middle now. He was a stripes guy before. Now he's learning how to go over the middle to make that tough catch. He's a guy that can put up some big numbers in this offense because so many teams now are playing all these wide fronts, eight, nine men to try to stop Fournette. Well, the thing about uh, Malachi, when I first thought that uh, he was going to go somewhere else, I didn't think he was going to go to LSU because of the, the quarterback scenario. I really said to myself, wow, young man, why are you going to LSU? I really don't have a QB to throw the football to you. He hung it out, stuck in there. Things are getting better. Things are getting better for him. Brandon Harris throwing the ball much better. Uh, he's a big, big receiver. And I like about him and the fact that he goes up, Mike, and gets the football. He's a great fade route guy in the end zone. He's the short yard right. type situation. He's catched a lot of those touchdowns there. I'm glad to see he's going over the middle. Uh, teams down around the road are going to want to see that. Will he go over the middle? And you said A.J. Green, what a great comparison. I mean, that's the kind of guy you want to be compared after because they look like each other. They play like each other. Uh, if they could just keep throwing the football, I think it gets better and better for him if they get throw the football more. And the crazy thing with him is once he, you know, he's not an instant fast guy. You know, we saw like Reggie Bush, Mike Lewis. Right. They were guys one step fast. With Malachi, it takes him the two steps. But once he gets the two steps, then he's flying downfield. And he's worked out in the offseason with Keenan Lewis. And, and I yeah. think that that's great insights that, you know what, you want to find out what it is that that cornerback to try to stop you. And so the last couple of years, he's been working out with Keenan, and it certainly has paid off this year. Well, you can see it paid off for him. And that's a smart move. You get a chance to go up against some NFL players that can teach you a few things because what they see from a standpoint of being, I'm on the defensive side of the ball. Here's how we try to stop you guys. And give him that motivation. And give him that thought in his head, say, well, if I can go up against an NFL guy, maybe I can do this against some of these college kids. You know, uh, our next spotlight guy is a man you will see a lot when LSU plays Alabama, and that's Ashawn Robinson. He was one of the top recruits in the country, a big six foot four, 315 pound junior. Well, he'll never see a senior season at Alabama because he'll be a first round pick. A guy this year, 26 tackles, one fumble recovery, half a sack. Now, he's not a great pass rusher, but what he is is a disturber in the middle, and he ties up all those blocks. And you can see teams trying to run the football at him. They got two guys on A'shaun Robinson each and every play, and he's not as explosive off the snap as Marcel Darius was, mm -hmm. but he's a bigger player and a guy that you're talking about a run stuffer. His pitch is right alongside that definition. Well, that's what they want nowadays in the NFL. They would love to have pass rushers, but they don't go any more, no more for pass rushers who are 300 something pounds. The pass rushers in the NFL nowadays, Mike, you know as well as I do, they're in that 175, 180 pound, you know, guys with a little more mobility. They want the 300 pound guys to be able to stop the running game because in the NFL, as well as in the SEC, there's some good running games and running teams in this SEC that if you got guys up front like Alabama has who can stop the run, and then you got those guys behind you to take care of the passing department, that's why LS, uh, Alabama's always had good defensive players. You know, one of the, the matchups, and we'll talk more about it next week, Ethan Posick going up against Ashawn Robinson. Mm. I mean, you know, you're talking about two stud football players. You're going to see them button heads. But I think, you know, that's been Alabama's bread and butter. Yeah. Those big defensive linemen stop the run and force you to throw the ball downfield. I will say this, though, in watching Alabama, that's secondary, and they have lost uh, their safety, won't play against LSU. That secondary is the worst I've seen in the Saban time frame there. They don't cover well downfield, so that tells me, Brandon Harris is the key when they're going to play next Saturday. I totally agree with you, Mike. If he could throw the football because if that's the weak link in Alabama's uh, defense has been the secondary. Then we can just sit here over the last four or five years and say, man, Alabama's secondary is the weakest link to that well, defense. It is this year. It's because they're losing players, though. Early. Early to the draft, and, and there's nothing you can do about it when you got juniors who should be seniors playing for you who go off. you got to find some of these young guys to go in there and play, and they're still developing these young men. And that's the thing about Alabama, though. they got a good football club. 
you know, that's a one-loss team going against LSU next week uh, with a no-loss team, and it's going to be a battle. If, if Harris, Brandon Harris can throw the football like he did against Western Kentucky, and I really truly believe that's who wins the game for them. If not, it's going to be a long game. You know, one of the things, too, is we'll bring up uh, Tulane uh, losing to Navy. And, man, this is a football team just swirling around, John. They don't have anything to really hang their hat on. And we knew one thing. Navy was going to come to play. And they have a style of system that just throws you completely off. But, you know, you want Tulane to be competitive, and they just haven't even been that. Right. And well, that's the thing that's really difficult to I, watch. I watched a little bit of the game, Mike, and they were, they were competitive enough that they shut down the running attack of Navy, but they still scored 31 points. points. But they're giving up, their, and people always want to blame the offense. I mean, let's be honest, I, like, I love the, you know, Lionel Washington and, and the guys over there, but, but their defense has given up well over 30-something a game, and they, and they came and score points. So there's issues going on with Tulane right now. And each week, though, the only Special thing, I don't, like, oh, the thing I don't like is – you can't each week have a different excuse why your team is the way it is. And that's every week now they change in their, their reasons why they're bad. You know, and when you watch LSU special teams, and Trent Domingue has really been gold for them, yeah. nine for nine, but their coverage units have been bad. But, man, Tulane special teams have been awful. It is. Uh, it just every week there seems to be a breakdown somewhere that leads to a score. So uh, it's, it's tough sled right now for C.J. At Tulane. We'll have more here on the John 4K show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford.